This is the Louis T. Network. Man, I love some football. Man, I love some football. My favorite week is week one, because I'm watching football. First comes the preseason, and I don't take a day off. And then it gets even better when your team makes the playoffs. 32 teams go hard for one thing. They work for one thing. That Super Bowl ring. 32 teams go hard for one thing. They work for one thing. That Super Bowl ring. joining me it's Tuesday you know what that means Monday night showcase to get to but before we get to that I got a little bit of bragging to do I went 12 and 3 last week look at me I told you I was I felt really good about my picks I told you I was going to bounce back and I think this is a sign of things to come for me I think I've got a good grasp and handle on who's good who's not who's going to be able to get it done in any given week and who isn't. And so I think I've got a good understanding of what this league is doing. And moving forward, I expect to be double digits from here on out. And uh, I thought last week was a really positive step in the right direction. And so 12-3, and three, my three losses were Detroit. That was very disappointing to, to see them and, and to watch the way they blew that game. Ah, disappointing. Chicago, Carolina, I mean, Chicago was up 21-7 to in that game. Robbie Gold misses a field goal, and I mean, I, I think the Carolina Panthers showed a lot of resolve in that game. They got it done. I tipped my cap to the Panthers. They needed that one more than the Bears did. Let's face it. They needed that game more than the Bears did, and they proved it. So that was my second loss, and my third loss was a game that, uh, what can you do, man? Sometimes... You're on the right side of things sometimes you're not. I, I, I tried the Patriots, and I said, hey, man, prove to me that you're not done. And I already had said this in the preview, and I honestly felt like I should have picked the Patriots. And I went against my better judgment. I, I went back and forth on that game. I said, hey, uh, it's Brady, it's Belichick. Until these guys don't get it done, this is what you need to do. But <laughs> after what they did to me last Monday, <laughs> I just couldn't go that route again, but I should have known there was a difference between being on the road in Kansas City, being at home at Foxborough, against a team that struggles in the, in the limelight, in the prime time, in the big stage, Cincinnati Bengals, so I should have known better, but I'll take that L, I'll wear it proudly, it's 12-3, and three. man, I can't really be mad at 12-3, and three. not at all, so very excited, can't wait to really elaborate more about that 12 and 3 mark on Friday when I give you my picks for week number six in the National Football League. But we'll, we'll handle that at a later date and time. Let's jump into this Monday night showcase, shall we? Monday night football, Seattle Seahawks, Super Bowl champion Seattle Seahawks, 2-1 on the season coming into this game, coming off of a bye in week number four, taking on the Washington Redskins who had been systematically taken apart by the New York football giants just, what, 11 days prior on Thursday Night Football in week number four. So this was a, this was a big matchup for a number of reasons, mostly for the Seahawks. Hey, <laughs> you're on the national stage, you're coming off of a bye, you can't lose to the Redskins after what we saw them do or, or have done to them. <laughs> A week ago, you can't lose to these guys, not on national television. And for the Redskins, don't embarrass yourself. That's what this game was about. Do not embarrass yourself. So that was the message. Winning, hey, if that comes, <laughs> they'll take it. But to me, the goal here was don't embarrass yourself. 
you, you did enough of that last week. Show well in front of the national stage, in front of the national audience. Show out. If you lose this game and you put forth the effort, everybody can live with that. But if you go out and you get drubbed 41 to 13, or you get beat up 34 13, and it's not close for three and a half quarters, I mean, at this point now, I'm begging. I am begging the networks to keep us off of the, of the national stage. So it was good to see the Redskins. Of course, you should know already by now, I am a Redskins fan. And so the goal for me was to not have the boys embarrass me. Don't embarrass yourself. Don't embarrass me. So they did that. I was proud of them for not embarrassing me. And, hey, big shout out. BSO to the officials last night. <laughs> because without the officials' help, that game gets out of control. Percival would have had at least two touchdowns, maybe even three, had the officials not intervened and said, hey, I, 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 not today, Percival. You won't light it up on the fantasy side of things tonight. Not, not tonight. Not on our watch. Hey, we got to keep this one close. With all the blowouts on Thursday Night Football, we have to do our part to make sure that this game is somewhat competitive. And so, hey, officials, Zebras, I thank you for your part in last night's 10-point defeat. I appreciate you. Good looking out. So, not really going to break the game down here. Um, I'll talk briefly about what I saw. But if you're looking for the in-depth review of that game, you got to come to the Redskins report tonight at 9.30 sharp. The Redskins report will be unveiled, and there we'll be talking about that Seattle Seahawks football game. So, uh, if you're looking for that kind of thorough breakdown that you normally get here on the showcase, whether it's Thursday or Monday night showcase, that's not happening because I'll be doing that on the Red Skins report. But I will say, Russell Wilson, good gosh, dangerous! Russell Wilson! That boy's bad. That boy's bad. <laughs> that boy is bad, man. Ryan Clark said after last night's performance, we just faced the best player, not the best quarterback, the best player in the National Football League. And after what I saw last night, and I've been saying this for a while, of all the young budding stars at the quarterback position, there's none better than Russell Wilson. I've already said that he's everything. He embodies every single thing I want Robert Griffin III to be. And then some. So I've already, st I've already stated and stressed how much affinity I have for Russell Wilson and that I think the world of this kid. And last night you saw the full spectrum on the display. You, you hear people talk about Fran Tarkenton. Well, what more do you want? What more Fran Tarkenton do you need than that third down play with the game essentially on the line, in the balance? That scramble around go backwards, run away from Ryan Kerrigan, who had him dead to rights, get away, and Arapo was held, sure he was. Okun got away with holding on that play, doesn't matter. For him to escape the way that he did, have the presence of mind to look upfield, see Marshawn Lynch, throw the football over a 6'4", 6'5", defender in Jason Hatcher, and get the football over his outstretched arms as he's leaping as high as he possibly can, and get it to Marshawn Lynch for the first down in the game clincher. I mean, what more can I say? There's not much more to say. He, I mean, over 100 yards rushing on the Redskins, over 200 yards passing. The, the kid did it all in this game. And, and Russell Wilson showed the complete package on Monday night. And all you can do when you get beat by a performance like that is tip your cap, man. All you can do is say, you got me, man. You got me. What, what else do you want me to say? The kid is dynamite. <laughs> so, uh... The Seattle Seahawks, they're a good football team. They are a good football team. And uh, they got it done last night. They, they made all of the plays. They still have to clean up the penalties. Some of those penalties were questionable. I know. You know, a couple of those Percy Harvin uh, touchdowns, there was some questionable calls, especially the one on James Carpenter, essentially with the pancake where he put some syrup on top. He just poured a little bit. of All he did was pancake a guy, put a little bit of syrup on top. They want to throw a flag for the A. I'm not complaining. Just know if that was your team, you would be up in arms. You would be screaming at the television. So 
I feel and I can empathize with, with Seattle Seahawks fans because that was a bad call. <laughs> that was a terrible call, but we'll get into all of those particulars on the Redskins report tonight at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But the Redskins put up a fight. Deshaun Jackson showed out. That was good to see. Kirk Cousins didn't vomit all over himself. Alfred Morris in the run game was stymied. This Seattle Seahawks defense made a concerted effort to stop Alfred Morris, and they did. Meanwhile, they were able to rush for over 200 yards in this game where the Seattle Seahawks. They dominated the line of scrimmage in this football game, and they were your victors 27-17 to in this ball game. They go to 3-1 and one on the season. Big win for them. Meanwhile, Redskins drop to 1-4 and four on the season, and all is not lost in Washington quite yet. There's still hope. This, this is a must-win game in uh, week number 6 against the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals are banged up. They're the walking wounded right now, so if there's any week to try to take advantage of this Cardinals team at home, this would be the week to try to get them if you're the Washington Redskins. Good luck. You're going to need it. Not many have been able to go into Arizona and come out with a W, so they're going to have to try their luck at that in week number six. So that's going to do it for the Monday Night Showcase. Remember, if you're looking for an extensive review of that game that took place last night, come to the Redskins Report tonight at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. So we'll take a quick break, come back, and then we'll put a nice pretty little bow on this episode here on Tuesday. Is your team hot or cold? Is your team trending up or down? Is your team flying below the radar or a visible force on the grid? Whatever the case, we'll do our own NFL power ranking here in the lab room. It's the NFL Power Grid coming soon here in the lab room. crazy weekend it was in the National Football League and in sports in general. I mean, college football was crazy. What What, what was it? Four of the top six lost in college football, I believe it was. And in the NFL, we had all these comebacks. The Rams almost completing a historic comeback against the Eagles. The Browns completing a historic comeback against the Tennessee Titans. We saw all kinds of games and we saw teams jockeying for position in, in their respective conferences. We saw the Cincinnati Bengals take a monumental step back. We saw the Patriots rise back to the forefront. We saw some teams rise from the dead. The Texans and the Cowboys had a battle out in Big D. You, you had the Buffalo Bills going on the road and beating the Detroit Lions. A lot of good football in week number five. And they're setting up some great matchups as we start to move deeper into the season. Enjoy it. I always say this every season. Enjoy the season because before you know it, it'll be week 12 and we'll be starting to lament this season that has gone by so quickly. And you'll be saying to yourself, oh my gosh, football is about to be over. And then we'll be jonesing all over again for this sport that we all love called the National Football League. So, Take it all in, man. Take it all in. Enjoy every single bit of it because, man, it seems like it's a blur every year. We're already heading into week number six in the National Football League. And so a lot of things happened over the weekend. I really enjoyed all of the football this weekend and hoping that all these built up divisional matchups live up to the hype. You got Giants and Eagles. You know, that could be for first place. You know, if the Giants take care of business, they're 4-2. And, and if the Cowboys somehow lose in Seattle, you could be talking about the G-Men at the top of that division. You talk about Patriots and Bills. All of a sudden, that's for first place in that division. So a lot of football that's going to be very meaningful coming up in week number six in the National Football League. And speaking of which, if you just caught the promo that I aired a second ago and you've been watching and it's been airing for about a week now coming soon well the power rankings are going to be out the first annual in the lab room power rankings that I like to call the NFL power grid will be coming your way tomorrow they will be unveiled tomorrow so the first 
set of power rankings here on this program will be unveiled. I expect a lot of you to view and tune in, check it out, and I expect you to have some debate. I expect you to disagree with my list, but nonetheless, everybody's played four games. That's why I wanted to wait. You can't really break things down and rank teams until everybody's got a quarter of their season under their belt. Everybody's played four games officially as of last night, so I feel like it's only right now to come out with a power ranking that ranks these teams from 1 to 32. We're going to break it down and we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. So hope to see you then tomorrow. That's going to do it for this installment of In the Lab Room. I thank you for joining me. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the Lab Room. Hey, take care of yourself. Enjoy whatever it is you're doing tonight. Come back, see me tomorrow. Hopefully you come check me out tonight, 9.30 p.m. Red Skins Report as we break down that Seahawks matchup from the night before and talk all things Washington Redskins on that program. If not, I'll see you tomorrow, Wednesday, in the lab on PDS. We've got the Soul Survivor. We've got a jam-packed show. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one. In the lab room.